you are given two eggs and you are in a building with 100 floors. You have to find minimum floor from which if an egg is dropped, it won't break. And you have to find the solution in such a manner that your worst case number of attempts is minimized. Let's find out how to answer this question in a technical interview. So the first solution that comes to mind is the binary search approach. We take egg 1 and drop it from the 50th floor. Suppose it doesn't break there. So next we try dropping egg 1 from 75th floor. Suppose it doesn't break there either. Next we try dropping egg 1 from 87th floor. Let's imagine it broke at the 87th floor. So by now we know for sure that the break even point is somewhere between 76 and 86th floor. So next we start with second egg, egg 2, and we start linearly from 76th floor up until 86th floor to find out the break even floor. So imagine if the break even floor was 79, then we would have tried 3 attempts for egg 1 and 4 attempts for egg 2, so total number of attempts would have been 7. So now let's get back to our question. Our question was, we need to minimize the total number of attempts in worst case scenario. So in case of binary search, the worst case scenario will be when the break-even floor is 49th floor. So imagine you took the egg 1 and you tried the 50th floor and egg 1 broke at the 50th floor itself. So you start with egg 2 from 1st floor up until 49th floor. So in total it will be 1 attempt for egg 1 and 49 attempts for egg 2, a total of 50 attempts. As you can guess, 50 attempts in worst case scenario might not be the best answer in case of an interview. So what do we do next? Instead of using binary search, let's try jumping 10 floors at a time for egg 1. So suppose you try dropping your egg 1 from 10th floor and it doesn't break. Next, you try dropping it from 20th floor and it again doesn't break. Next, you try dropping it from 30th floor and suppose it breaks there. So now we know that our break even floor might be somewhere between 21 to 30. So what do we do? We start off egg 2 from 21st floor, then 22nd floor, then 23rd floor and so on to find out our break even floor. So let's get back to our question again. What's the number of attempts in the worst case scenario if we follow this approach? So imagine if the break even floor was 99th floor. What will be the total number of attempts? We will start off with egg 1 from floor 10, then 20, then 30 and up until floor 100 and on 100th floor the egg 1 will break. Then we start egg 2 from 91st floor, then 92nd floor, then 93rd floor, up until 99th floor. The total number of attempts in this case will be 19 attempts. 10 attempts for egg 1 and 9 attempts for egg 2. So by using 10 floors at a time approach, we have done a great improvement. Instead of using 50 attempts in the worst case scenario in binary search, we are now using only 19 attempts in the worst case scenario. But is this the most optimal solution that we can get? In order to find out the most optimal solution, we will need to take a step back and analyze the two solutions that we have come up with so far. So the common thing that happened in both these solutions was egg 1 was used to determine the range where the break-even floor exists and egg 2 was used in a linear fashion to find out the exact break-even floor. If suppose we increase the range for egg 1 
right? Like instead of using 10 floors, suppose we say 15 floors at a time, what's gonna happen? In case of worst case scenario, the number of attempts for egg two will become higher. So that will increase the total number of attempts in the worst case scenario. Similarly, if we were to reduce the range for egg one, suppose we want to do five floors at a time instead of 10 floors at a time for egg one. What's gonna happen is the number of attempts in the worst case scenario for egg one itself will be so high that the total number of attempts in the worst case scenario will be very high. Since our aim is to reduce the number of attempts needed in worst case scenario, what we need to do is for each attempt consumed by egg one, we need to reduce the number of attempts needed by egg two by one. So what I mean by that is, let's take our example of 10 floors at a time approach that we just did. We attempted egg one at 10th floor. Suppose it did not break. Then next we tried 19th floor instead of 20th floor for egg one. What that will do is it will help us reduce the range needed by egg two by one at each and every step. So suppose it broke at 19th floor, then instead of attempting from 11 to 19, we have to attempt 11 to 18th floor for egg two. So by doing that, we are minimizing the number of attempts needed in worst case scenario. In order to find the actual number, the range needed for egg one, we will have to solve a small mathematical equation. The mathematical equation will look something like this, x plus x minus one plus x minus two and so on with a sum of 100. The x is solved to somewhere around 13.6, so it is the 14th floor, the round up figure. So the actual solution will look something like this. We will start off the egg one at 14th floor. Suppose it does not break there. Then next, we attempt egg one at 27th floor. Let's imagine it again doesn't break there. Then again, we try egg one at 39th floor. Suppose it broke there. Then next, we take egg two. The egg two is definitely gonna break somewhere between 28 and 38th floor. So if egg two breaks at 38th floor, then egg two has tried 11 attempts and egg one had tried three attempts. So the total is 14 attempts in the worst case scenario. So by successively reducing the range needed by egg one by one at each and every step, we have reduced the total number of attempts needed in worst case scenario to 14. If you are able to explain your approach clearly in the interview, then I would say that you have successfully answered the interview question. I hope that the solution was clear after watching this video. I will also put a link to my blog post explaining the same solution. If you like the video, please press the like button. Let me know your thoughts by adding comments to the video as well. I'll be adding more such interview questions on my YouTube channel. So please do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, happy coding.